Today we're going to replace the screen on an LG G2. Uh, unfortunately, when I initially started taking this apart, my camera was not rolling, so I'm actually taking the completed uh, phone here that I've already repaired. I'm going to show you how to take it apart and then put it back together. So we will begin by removing the SIM card tray. And the next thing we want to do is pry the back door uh, battery cover off. And this one is uh, just held in place by clips that go around the edges. So you want to find a soft spot here with a pry tool somewhere where you can get inside. And it's going to make some pretty loud snapping noises when you unclip this thing. So don't, that, don't let that scare you. You're not breaking anything. It's just clipped on there really tight. But you do want to be careful to um, work your way all around the perimeter here. And if you start to pull the panel off and it's still locked in place, make sure you disconnect all these clips by going around the edge here with your pry tool. Uh, of course, being careful not to uh, go too far in or and basically to avoid the charging port and volume button control areas. And once you get inside here, you can see I'm starting to pull it apart, but it's still caught on there. You don't want to force that because you can crack this back panel if you're not careful. So definitely don't force it. And once we get inside here, we have a whole bunch of screws that need to come out. Most of them are silver. There's actually one that is uh, black, and it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to zoom in here so you can get a better look. Right here, the first one that we're going to be removing kind of blends into the background. So do make sure that you take out this screw right above the LG logo here. And then the rest of them are pretty obvious. You shouldn't have any trouble uh, finding them. But we'll go ahead and speed this up here and get all the screws removed. And now we're going to pry this little panel off the top end here. It also has some clips that you'll have to kind of work underneath. But uh, once the screws are all removed, you just this matter of prying this off from the right areas. And again, make sure you don't go too deep with your pry tool. Don't want to uh, put any pressure on anything that's underneath there. That does come off pretty easily though. And then we have this interesting uh, flex cable assembly that goes up the sides here. Uh, one little plastic panel on the bottom. And up here at the top, you've got your flex cables for the display, a little bit of tape over the top of those holding them in place. And what I always recommend is that you take your replacement unit, plug it in and test it before you do the full disassembly. You do want to make sure everything is functional on your touchscreen and your replacement LCD. And we have a couple of pop connectors down here at the bottom in addition to an antenna wire that plugs into this secondary board. So trying to get under here and as you can see it, it kind of already looks like this antenna wires had some pressure on it and it was like that when I opened it up. So um, as nice as a phone, as nice of a phone as this is at this point, it kind of reminds me of the second uh, antenna wire down here at the bottom. Kind of reminds me of a knockoff uh, Samsung Galaxy phone I was working on recently as far as the design goes. Not sure what they were thinking when they put this one together, but uh, overall pretty solid. Just looks kind of funny on the inside. And then up here at the top, we've got some more connectors that we're going to pull off. And there will be a little bit of adhesive under those areas behind where they're plugged in towards the center. So you may have to play, apply a little bit of heat. Uh, these, as I said, I've taken it apart before, so pretty easy to pop them out. Just make sure you get it under the edge of the board. And there you can kind of lift this whole thing back. Uh, be real careful over here on the side though. We need to heat this other piece up and pry that away from the mid frame. Very easy to tear these cables if you're not careful. I just want to get under the adhesive and free that. 
and then it's kind of uh, a little hard to explain, but everything's kind of just routed a particular way at the bottom here. And we're also going to get under this little piece next to the charging port very carefully, pulling that away from the midframe as well. And take your time removing this. It has a few cables that are just kind of routed in a very unusual <laughs> kind of configuration here. Uh, you've also got your microphone down here at the bottom which may have some adhesive behind it. So you want to be really careful when you pull that out as well. And you can see this one's kind of sticky. But if you're very careful you should be able to free everything down here. And then make sure you don't get any cables snagged on your way out. And there's your uh, power button and headset, microphone, etc. interface. And then we've got these flex cables that kind of go through the midframe here. So what we're going to do at this point is just um, heat up the front of the phone, take your pry tool, go around the edges where the glass is. I'm not going to do it on this one because this is a brand new screen, but be very careful if you use a metal pry tool, you don't want to scrape up the bezel. Uh, best thing to use is plastic. Once you get it started, just work your way around with a little bit of heat and you should be able to pull the whole front off of the phone. When you get done, you'll be looking at something like this and you can see um, where I've added adhesive on the replacement screen here. And literally, it's just the top and the bottom that have very much glue that you need to worry about when you're removing it. So it should come off pretty easy. Definitely add some new adhesive um, after you clean the surface. And make sure that you do not block the windows at the top of the lens. There's one for the front-facing camera. There's also one for the proximity sensor. So you want to make sure those are transparent or you're going to have some problems once you get it back together. All right, so now we're going to route these cables back in through the housing uh, very carefully, of course. Flex cables can be uh, quite fragile, so you don't want to put any stress on them. Don't bend them any more than necessary, and make sure you don't get anything caught, snagged, or uh, otherwise obstructed as you're working this through. And you've got uh, two different cables down here at the bottom that need to go in. So I'm starting with this smaller one first. And then this uh, wide piece here, we'll put that in afterwards and then just kind of route the one at the top, which, uh, of course, this makes it a little difficult to test the screen initially because you can test um, just the LCD and not really the touch screen without um, pretty much pulling the whole logic board and the battery out of the housing. So while I like to do that, it's kind of tricky on this particular phone. And you can see I'm sitting here looking at this thing and wondering why that connector won't go into the board. Well, that is because we have another piece that needs to go in first. So the pop connector for the um, digitizer, I believe, is at the top, is actually built into this secondary, uh, whatever you want to call it, that has the power button on it. So we'll go ahead and install this first. And lighting these pop connectors up can be a bit tricky. Make sure to not force them if they're not straight. You don't want to just put excessive pressure. You can actually damage them. And in the worst case scenario, if you damage the one, the connector on the logic board, you're probably going to have to start all over and look for a replacement unit. We have uh, antenna wire here that came disconnected at some point during the repair. And you want to make sure that these actually go right down the channels 
that are uh, designed for them on the side of the phone. There's actually one that they share right here in the area that I'm working on. And if you don't have your antenna wire down in those channels, you will pinch them when you put the back panel onto the phone. Um, it'll either not seat properly or you'll be putting pressure on those. And these are pretty fragile as well. And of course, unique to this phone. So if you break those antenna wires, you've got to find a replacement somewhere else. Down here at the bottom, it can be a little bit tricky routing this stuff through. And this is where it gets a little bit frustrating because you've got all sorts of different cables going in different directions. And this weird looking plastic thing that's attached to the microphone area, I'm not sure what made them design, decide on this design, but it is a little goofy on the inside. So I'll try to get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing here. Like I said, it's a little hard to explain. It's much easier just to watch, <laughs> to uh, make a video, show you how we do it. But these things have one particular way that they can be installed, and otherwise it just doesn't come together properly. There's also a rubber cover that goes over the microphone at the bottom. That's that little gold square. If it happens to fall off, you want to make sure that when you put that rubber piece back on that the hole in the side of it is facing towards the bottom of the phone. That actually allows the sound to enter the microphone. If you put that rubber piece on in the wrong position, you will nobody's going to be able to hear you talking when you make a call. So um, if that happens, you'll, worst case scenario, have to take the phone apart and reinstall that piece. But you do need that little rubber gasket that goes over the mic. And hopefully this part goes a lot smoother for you than it did for me. It took me a little while to get this thing situated in the right position. And for whatever reason, I'm really having trouble getting the pop connectors to go uh, into where they're supposed to be on this phone. I'm not sure what it is. Just a little tricky. And the uh, original adhesive from under that bottom PCB should be sufficient to hold it in place. So go ahead and get these antenna uh, wires routed again. And from here out, it's pretty much downhill. We'll reconnect these um, flex cables on the sides. And 
make sure that little piece down where the zero is uh, right here, make sure you get that installed in the right position as well. Should be sticking to the frame. And now we've got everything plugged in, we can go ahead and replace these uh, plastic covers. One on the bottom, one on the top. And you can see I was kind of holding that as I put the first screw in into the phone. Oddly, these things just feel like they don't sit properly. Uh, and I've noticed this a lot with LG phones. You really have to put the screws in, otherwise the pieces feel like they're just going to fall off. Not sure why that is. And remember, we've got this one black screw here. And after that, you can go ahead and install the rest. Make sure that this in, uh, microphone cover is in the right position. Otherwise, it's going to be tricky to get the back panel on. And I recommend you put the panel on from the bottom first. That seemed to work out the best uh, as far as working around this little piece down here. If it gets trapped, otherwise it won't snap in right. So just start at the bottom. Go ahead and put the back panel on. It will make a bunch of popping sounds usually as you're installing it. And just work your way around gradually. Make sure everything seats properly. We'll go ahead and put the SIM card inside. And again, just work your way around the perimeter, make sure everything looks nice and smooth. You should be able to fire it up and make a call. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Post your questions in the comment section below or visit gocellphonerepair.com forward slash forum. Thanks for watching.